Welcome to this new session. In this session, I will introduce you how we are going to do the precedence diagramming. In the previous sessions, I introduced the different types of dependencies. I spoke to you about how we will order the different activities chronologically. Now we have to use that information to make a precedence diagram. We look into activities without predecessors, we look into activities without successors, and some activities will have predecessors and successors. At the end of this session, I will add some start and finish milestones to the precedence diagram. So let's have a look at the precedence information. It is typically represented in a table like you see at the right. We have in the first column the task identifiers, in our case just letters of the alphabet. Then we have the information about the predecessors. And the last column in our example is the time, the duration of those activities. The time can be given in minutes, hours, days, weeks, depending on the size and principles of your project. Later, we will add a third column, which is related to the cost of each activity. We see the first two activities, A and B. They have no predecessors, so they are at the beginning of the project. Activities G and H have no successors. There is no more follow-up work once those two tasks are being completed. So they have no successors there at the end of the project. The intermediate activities C, D, E and F have both successors and predecessors. Let's start with the activities without predecessors. Like I said, A and B have no predecessors, so they are at the beginning of the precedence diagram. The same we do with activities without successors, but now we know that they are at the end of the precedence diagram. So we already know the start of the network and the end. The intermediate tasks C, D, E and F have both predecessors and successors. And we link the relationship between predecessors successors and the different activities by arrows. For example, the arrow from A to C shows that A has to be finished before activity C can start. So the final look network still has to be completed with the start and the finish milestones. We have activities A and B which we call hanging activities. The same with the activities G and H. Some people don't like this. Well, we can resolve this problem by adding a start and a finish milestone. Some cases people put an activity with duration equal to zero. But when we put that information in our project management software, we will see that the software automatically changes that activity in a milestone. The final network diagram looks like this. We have the start, milestone, we have the tasks in the order, taking into account the precedence information, and we have the finishing milestone. So, now we understand how we make a precedence diagram. We will use this information to do some exercises and later we will use the precedence diagram to do some important calculations. There are some more difficult sections and sessions coming. So, see you next time. Thank you very much.